welcome to our series on the basics of using SOLIDWORKS X-Design. In this video, we'll be learning the basics of using design guidance in X-Design. Design guidance allows the software to guide you to the optimal shape based on criteria you assign. We'll take a look at the basics of assigning a predefined material, deciding how the part is held, selecting where the loads are assigned, and evaluating our optimized shape. Design guidance can be used to redesign existing parts or give feedback where material should be added if we're looking for a fresh start. The first one we will take a look at is redesigning an existing part. You can either redesign a part created in X-Design or import a file from another system. For training purposes, we'll import an iGIS file. You can find a link to this file in the description below. Simply click the Manage bar and Import. Select iGIS from the file type and browse to the Bike Crank Arm iGIS file and select Import. This will open the geometry we wish to optimize in X-Design. The first thing we need to do is assign a material. In the Tools action bar, select Material to launch the Material Browser. There are two main categories, Core Materials and Covering Materials. Make sure to use Core Material. These materials have all the proper engineering information entered to accurately perform an analysis, such as Poisson's ratio, Young's modulus, density, yield strength, and more. We will address creating new materials in a separate video. For this example, expand aluminum and select 6061T6. Right-click on the material and select Apply. The material will now show up in the Design Manager. Now let's switch our attention to Design Guidance. Select the Design Guidance action bar. I like to work my way from left to right in this bar. First, we'll tell the software how the part is held by clicking on the clamp icon. This will remove movement in all degrees of freedom from any face we select. For our bike crank, select the five bolted faces in the center hub. We'll assume that while pedaling, these faces would be locked down and unable to move. If you select an extra face, simply select it again to remove it from the list, or select the X beside the face listed in the dialog box. Now that we've held the part, we need to tell the software what loads it will see. If you select the flyout on the force icon, you can see we can apply forces, pressures, and torques. We'll apply a force to this face where the pedal would be connected. Enter value of 1300 newtons. We want to change the direction of the force, so select the option for other direction and select a vertical edge of the part. It is that simple to set up a study. We have a material, where the part is held, and what the load will be. You can see X-Design stores all this information in the Design Manager. If you select on the clamp and the force, we can hide them from our view. To run the study, select the flyout beside New Design, and for this example, select Redesign. This brings up the Solver dialog. The first thing we need to do is tell the software which faces we need to keep. Select Volume and pick Preserve. Select all the holes in our part. This will keep these faces as part of our design. It won't necessarily keep them connected. We need to make that decision as a designer, but it will stop them from being removed when optimizing the part. On the Settings tab, it asks which volume we'd like to redesign. Select anywhere on the part to optimize the crank arm. Select any target mass savings you'd like. I selected 50%. I select Find for the shape granularity. Click Generate, and X-Design will start to calculate the optimal shape for our part. This process can take anywhere from 5 minutes to an hour, depending on the complexity of the part. The Results tab will show the process as it completes. After it solves, X-Design provides an optimum shape for the part with the loading that we set up. Using the slider, we can add and remove mass from our component to see different options. As you can see from our crank arm, we can drastically remove material from the back of the crank arm, but the material is necessary where the arm connects to the hub. Select OK and it will overlay the geometry on the part, and we can add features to match our design to the optimal design. We can also export the design guidance result as an STL file. 
allowing us to 3D print our results. I think one of the most exciting features of Design Guidance is the feature we will look at next. We can have the software help us select a shape with nothing to start besides a few sketches. We will let X-Design show us a shape for our new gripper finger design. For this example, start a new component and in the drop down in the upper right hand corner of the screen select preferences. We're going to set our length unit to millimeters. Start a sketch on the YZ plane and sketch two four millimeter circles located at the origin as shown. When completed, the green check will exit the sketch. Now move to the XY plane, which is 90 degrees to the plane upon which we just sketched. This time sketch a rectangle, 3 mm by 5 mm centered on the plane, 65 mm from the origin. Next we need to apply material, so again click the tools action bar and pick material. We'll apply 304 steel to this part. In the design guidance action bar, we need to add a clamp. Select clamp and then you can select the shaded contour of the upper circle. We are also able to restrain a face in a specified direction. Select Fixture and then the shaded contour of the rectangle. Under the Restraint direction, we can restrain it normal to the face or specify a direction. In this instance, normal is what we'd like, as the finger is clamping closed on an object. Finally, we need to add a load. Select Force and we'll select the bottom circle as the face we're going to apply the load. Set the load to 900 newtons and for a direction, Select one of the center lines or edges of the rectangle to apply the load in the Y direction. That's all we need to set up our study. We can now simply pick New Design to launch the Design Guidance dialog box. The Volume tab will give us a bounding box around our sketch items. We can expand that as needed. Select Generate and X-Design will begin the process of narrowing in on a shape that is optimized for clamping on an object with a 900 Newton load. Once complete, I can again export the STL file to 3D print where I can start designing my part using this as guidance for the shape that is needed. As you can see, X-Design now allows us to move optimization to the very start of the design process, which will greatly reduce the number of design cycles needed to obtain the best design possible. This concludes our lesson on design guidance. Please check out any of our other lessons about designing in SOLIDWORKS X-Design.